believe in yourself, set goals, and destroy Really them. excited to bring this story of Chris Kerber today. I went to get out of the van, and I couldn't move. I woke up, and I just saw a bright light. I could see the pool of blood just getting bigger and bigger, and I kept saying to myself, there's no way that I'm going to survive this. Hours and hours went by. We're going to have to get the jaws of life to come cut open the van, because there was no way to get in the van to get my leg out of the engine. There's no way I'm going to live. The van is wrapped in electrical wires. We have to get the power company out here to shut off the electricity. As a lot of time went by and I just saw the blood. I mean, the blood was just, it was insane. It, was, it looked like a pool. <laughs> get bigger and bigger. I was like, you know, there's no way that I'm going to survive this. Um, my mom and my aunt, their faces just rise above me like I was yeah. in the clouds or something it was insane all I see is a bright bright light immediately I had thought I had died I looked down and they took the blanket off my leg and it was it's the most horrifying thing that I've ever seen where's my life gonna go from here being an athlete and running around and you know whatever to I have one life now. You should have died. You lost about 60% of your blood. We're probably going to have to amputate your leg from the knee down. Surprisingly, I was totally fine with that because I was so grateful to still have a heartbeat at this point. You know, if I could leave here breathing and still live to tell about this, then I'll do it with one leg that's fine. Many surgeries, and they had to give me many, many bags of blood to compensate what I lost. By the grace of God, I have managed it to keep your leg. We want you to try and stand up, but we're pretty sure you're going to have to remain in a wheelchair. I tried standing up. Just had this massive, massive life change. I'm going to spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair. What's going through your head? And, and talk to me about some of the things that are that you're thinking. Because at this point, so many people would just fold and say, you know what, I'm going to succumb to this. I had a tragedy happen to me. And, you know, not make that, that pivot to, to really push forward. Take us through that a little bit. I was bit. still so grateful to be alive that it just didn't even matter. You know, what am I going to do now? I will overcome it and I will do something great. I felt like I'd be that one person to prove them wrong. Why? And tell, me, tell me why. I mean, what... Uh, just again, because I'm, of... I guess just because of what I had already been through. Um, I guess the mentality that I had, I always felt like I should have died when I was two years old and I was going through, you know, getting burned in a closet and, yeah. you know, getting abused and, you know, stuff like that went through my mind and I thought, I mean, if I can make it over that and I'm still here after this car accident, so, I mean, and I'm still breathing. Obviously, I have a purpose. There's, there's, there's a reason yeah. I'm here. Otherwise, I wouldn't be. You gotta believe. Spread that to other people and show them that nothing is impossible. But I have to imagine they're scratching their head, going, "How on earth does somebody go from being in, in a horrific accident, losing 60 percent of their blood, in a wheelchair, barely keeping their leg, and ending up where you are as, as a fitness trainer?" Being in a wheelchair for so long, I had kind of accepted it. And then it got to a point where I was in it for six months and I said to myself, you know what? I don't care what the doctors said. I don't care about anything. I'm going to walk. Got out of my wheelchair one day and tried to walk. And it was the most painful thing ever. I couldn't put any pressure on my left leg. A couple more months, so I was able to walk with a limp, but I was able to walk. And at that point, I was still amazed that I was even doing it. Aggressively walked normal again progressively started to try and hop on that leg and it worked progressively tried to jog and run and then it got to a point where about a year and a half after the accident I was running jumping and doing everything just the way I was before you stood up out of the wheelchair that was a win yeah you took a step that was a win you took three steps that was a win. That achievement uh, from going from in that wheelchair to being able to run is really the accumulation of thousands of little small goals. Is that fair? Yes, and that's exactly why I push myself to the limits I do now is because of how far of a gap a wheelchair to running is when you have hundreds of people batting that. Yeah, that's, that's pretty powerful. That first time you went from walking to legitimate running. Talk to me about that feeling. I felt 
euphoric. It felt like a dream. It kind of felt like the whole world was blanked out and I was just running in the clouds. If you could just imagine like a, a regular person that's just completely healthy, if they were to just jump off of a building and be able to fly, I would stop and look down at the scar and then I would go back up and keep running. So, all right, here you are. You've, again, overcome just an absurd... All of that, all that sort of stuff. Now, you got to figure out what you're going to do for a living. You're, you know, again, you were a young kid when this happened. You were only 17 years old. You, you know, were in a wheelchair, and, you know, that throws a complete monkey wrench into, you know, college, any anything, even just a regular job. So, talk to me about what you decided to do with yourself. When I got into the accident, there was absolutely nothing left. I was 120 pounds, um, six foot. I want to get healthy, and I want to change my life, and I want to see if I could push my body even further than I already have. Started to see that I was capable of much more than just running and walking. The best way that I could possibly motivate people would be through fitness because it has to do with the body and pushing it and changing it. And it, it just went so well with what I already was passionate about. I had to become a trainer. I felt like if I could just push people as hard as I pushed myself, it would Right. The, the story at this, sorry to interrupt you, I got to do it because the story at this point, Chris, could almost be a story on 2020 if you stopped right now. Yeah, that's that's a pretty amazing story. And, and you know, the thing that I re- really, really like about what you've done is uh, many, many people, Chris, would have would have stopped at so many points along your journey. You really took that next step. And not only did you heal yourself, make yourself better, stronger, faster, you then dedicated your life to doing the same for others. And that's such a, a, a selfless act. I felt obligated to do what I'm doing now. I can't even imagine what it's like for you. You know, after going through the experience that you did, you know, you're now dedicating your time to helping and improving the life of, of others. And that's just a, a amazing selfless act that, uh, you know, that you're partaking in. So the reward that I get when I see the results that my clients get is just... It just brings me back to where we just were, with where I was, and it. I know the feeling that they get, and there's just nothing more rewarding. It's truly an incredible story that Chris had to tell. There was many points there along the way where I think uh, many people would probably not be able to, uh, you know, continue on as he did, but. It just shows that it's there, and it's there within all of us. And, you know, if you set the right goals and you have the right mindset, we're truly able to accomplish just amazing, amazing things. And I think uh, uh, Chris is a uh, you know, testament to that that fact. So, and I want to thank you very much for coming on here and truly telling an, an incredible story to the BeFit Nation.